Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Zaji and today I'd like to share with you a little bit about some sewing things. In particular, we're going to be talking about spring, early spring collection from McCall's. Now, that's usually when they have loads of their summer patterns where it's like warmer weather styles and I get excited for this release every single year. So I'm excited to show with you or show you and share with you <laughs> the patterns that I picked up from this um, newest launch. There might be a pattern or two that's not specifically from the early spring launch, but you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you like talking about sewing things, sewing patterns, all of that jazz, please do stick around, click that subscribe button so that we can continue talking about sewing things together. Okay, so I'm hoping everything is in focus. I did go ahead and connect my mic. It was not originally connected, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna go through them. How I have them on my desk. It's so empty. My machines are in the shop right now getting cleaned and maintenance and all of that good stuff, but oh my gosh, I feel so sad to not have my machines here because normally that's what would be right here and we wouldn't be able to talk at my desk. Anyways, so one thing I was happy to see is that they did bring a couple of 80s, or not 80s, 70s patterns um, out with this newest collection. Um, and to my understanding, they just take patterns they already have and they just modify them to um, the standard that they use now. So this is McCall's 8257. It is a pattern for a set, essentially. So this comes with some tops, a skirt, and pants. But we're going to start with the top that really I'm most excited to make, which is version C. Honestly, I want to make this like right now, <laughs> right now. It's such a beautiful flowy top. So it's got kind of like raglan sleeves and a huge flowy fluted sleeve option. And it also has these kind of, um, I don't know, they, they're kind of like a square sleeve, but they hang in a um, handkerchief kind of style, gives you that kind of pointed with flowiness. <laughs> I don't know what the, the technical term is, but they are very interestingly styled um, garments. I love the lines on these and definitely the um, square neckline that you get. But I also like the V neckline from the tie um, top that is in this pattern as well. I also really like the pants. They're a nice wide leg. Um, it looks like they have elastic in them, so they're gonna be a pull-on pant that's really flowy. This gives me ultimate, ultimate 70s vibes. I want this whole outfit like C and D together. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, cause C is a skirt. C is a skirt, that's what's different. So C is the skirt and E is the long pants. Um, I'm sorry, did I say that backwards? Oh my God, I'm tripping all over that. D is the skirt and E is the long pants. C is the little tie front shirt. This uh, square neckline with the square sort of sleeve situation is A and B. I think the difference is maybe the embroidery or the fabrics that they're using. It's like a contrast versus all self fabric. So yeah, anyways, love this pattern. It was marked as easy, so I'm definitely about this pattern. I wanna make this set. Um, it calls for lawns, lightweight cotton blends, um, chalet and crepe. And like I said, um, A and B have like a contrast fabric that you would call for, which would be lace. So yeah, love, love this design. Um, I really want to uh, make this as soon as possible. I want to make a million of version C because that top only calls for about an a yard and a half under two yards for sure and to get those real flowy sleeves thank you please I would like to take that I would love to take that um, and it looks like the pants since they are quite wide leg it will take about three yards so you know if you're doing a, the full set and doing it all in the same fabric then you know you're probably gonna have to get quite a bit but I'm sure you have smaller pieces that would work to make um, these two separately and wear them with other garments but oh my gosh the way they have it styled with the tie front top sold me I talked about that for a long time but it sold me I was so excited to put that in my cart 
Just want to cut in here really quick because I always forget. Please let me know which pattern was your favorite in the comment section down below. Um, I'm always really interested to see because you all know I gather loads of patterns and I collect quite a bit of them. So I'm always interested to know which one was your favorite. I do um, think that I'll start looking through the comments and see which patterns you all like to choose what patterns I will be um, putting up on my channel if I'm going to do another sew along because I've been thinking about it and I want to do a pattern that you all want to see. So anyways, which patterns were your favorite from this video? Um, let me know in the comment section and let's just get, let's get into these patterns. The next thing I'm going to talk about is um, McCall's 8255. This pattern is for a top. So it's various different um, versions of this top and I am in love with all of them. It's a very um, structured top so it's meant to be used with more um, sturdy, not sturdy, but more structured fabrics. So things like cotton blend, so like broadcloth, um, Kona would be really good here too. You could of course use like quilting cottons and things like that but you could also use uh, ginghams, linen, and sateen. And it does have a lining so this top doesn't have um, like binding or something to finish it. It is fully lined and it is really beautiful. I just think it would be so so cute in really any sort of fabric if you wanted to do a solid color if you wanted to do like they've done with like florals and things like that. I just thought it would be so pretty. I love the fact that it has a variation in a couple um, in the sleeves. You have a couple of sleeves options. Wow really stuttering over my words y'all. It's been a while since I've been on here talking about patterns and I feel it. So um, you've got a sleeveless option so it'd be like a structured tank which I think would be so freaking cute over top of like wide leg pants or a cute little mini skirt or over jean shorts. Oh yep. That's calling my name. I like that a lot. They do have a short sleeve version which is actually a, a full sleeve. It's not like a cap sleeve or anything or like a full short sleeve. I don't know how else to say that. It's not a cap sleeve. Um, there is also kind of like an elbow length sleeve and a like bracelet length sleeve as well. So this would be a pattern you could wear all year round and I love those especially when you've got different variations within the bodice itself so it looks like there is a variation in length of the bodice as well as the shaping under those princess seams that they have on uh, this pattern so you can either have like this sort of scallop style um, with the seaming or it could just be straight across. This pattern I thought would just be so cute and a really great addition to your wardrobe and it very well could work for school, work, chilling out on the weekends, you know. I see this pattern having a lot of potential and I want to add it to my wardrobe. <laughs> Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is McCall's 8256. This pattern is one that I thought would be perfect for summer again. Even in all the variations, of course using whichever fabric you choose that will really determine whether or not it'll be suitable, but this one is one that comes, this pattern is one that comes with lots of sleep options as well. So you can really create drastically different looking tops depending on what you pick, um, which style you pick, and obviously like your fabric choice and that kind of thing. So. Anyways, let's get into it. Um, it does have a neckband that is binding. That's kind of like the staple part of all of these tops or like the commonality between all these tops. There's a sleeveless version, there's a fluted sleeve version, there's an elbow length gathered sleeve version and also a long sleeve version as well. And I really like the style of this top. It's so easy and it would be so nice especially when it's real hot outside because it's not like sticking you or anything and I'm just like thinking about how amazing it would be to have this flowy top on when it's like 100 degrees outside and they did the version A in yellow which is calling my name and I'm like dang do I have a piece of fabric big enough to make this a yellow fabric that I can make this with but yeah it's super cute I love this style um, I was thinking that it would be so great like I said for warm days it calls for cotton lawn which would be perfect uh, cotton blends um, poplin and stable knits I guess maybe for the longer sleeve versions I'd want to use a stable knit because I'm like that version A in a stable knit seems, I don't know, I guess Ponty's not that bad but it wouldn't flow as, as much as like using a lawn or something like that. I'd venture to say that you could 
probably get away with using linen for this pattern as well and that would be really nice I'm definitely thinking about it in linen that would be really cool um, but it doesn't use too much fabric even though it is quite a billowy poofy big top so under two yards for most of these styles outside of obviously the one with the long sleeves because that is going to just take more fabric because it is long sleeved but yeah super obsessed with that pattern i'm excited to make version a as soon as possible now the next dress that i'm going to talk about is one that i know i've seen loads of people already make um and blow my mind because i've been obsessed with the versions that i've seen online already especially on instagram um but my gosh this is mccall's 8252 I don't know if I said what the last one was, but this is McCall's A252. It is a cutout dress um, that is connected in the front with a large uh, ring. So, so cute. Um, I really love this pattern. Now, I've seen it be made in really bold colors, but also in solids as well. And I think it looked beautiful in both ways. So, I'm definitely excited about potentially doing this dress. I've been thinking about the sleeveless version just all day and all night. <laughs> I don't know what's stopping me. I do want to make one of these dresses pretty soon. Um, it is an average style pat or average um, difficulty pattern. So I'm guessing that's probably because you're putting in hardware and a zipper. So you would definitely need to feel comfortable doing both of those sorts of techniques, like working with some sort of, um, zipper installation in general but so cute um i you know i'm obsessed with the cutouts i love a good cutout and i love a good dress but there are several different sleeve options so you do have the more puffy um style short sleeve and then there is a more traditional style short sleeve and of course sleeveless like i said the skirt lengths does vary uh quite a bit and it looks like for c wow why did that look like is it a split oh yeah so for c there is a split which is awesome i like a good split and it's a longer uh type of dress but it's got it's got your whole belly out i love it <laughs> i love it um the fabrics that they recommend are cotton blends poplin taffeta and sateen yes all of those things i'd also probably throw linen in there because you know how much i love linen and probably shally too honestly i can't imagine why you wouldn't be able to use shally for this pattern um and it'd be super cute i want to make this dress either way not super fabric hungry um and like i said you will have to get that um that ring that like what size ring is it okay it doesn't actually say on the back so what the heck okay it literally doesn't say what size ring you would need so this would be like one of those trial and error type things i would probably say this ring is two or three inches big um it's a pretty significant size definitely not something that i just have on hand so i would definitely have to buy that separately which i mean not a big deal but why did i don't tell you what okay whatever Still super cute dress, still looking forward to making it. Let's move on to the next pattern. I spent a lot of time on there. Okay, so the next style is another dress. Now I've also seen a lot of really cute versions of this dress and I'm like, dang, I wanna join in. I wanna dress like that. <laughs> Cause it's so cute. Like this is one of those dresses that is definitely like summertime fun. Like I'm trying to be, you know, on a resort somewhere, but also just, you know, hanging out when it's hot outside. It's super cute. Um, this is McCall's 8253. This is um, a knit pattern, so it's meant for knit fabrics. Um, it's got several different variations for the sleeves, of course. It's got a sh like an elbow length sleeve, a long sleeve, and then sleeveless. You could probably, you know, cut off the elbow length shorter if you wanted to be a shorter sleeve, you know, and have four different options, but that's just throwing that out there. Um, it does have a center seam through the front, which is how it does the ruching. So it has ruching um, for the top that comes with a tie, which I think makes that part adjustable. But underneath the belly button or like where the waistline is, there's also some ruching that goes down the front a little bit as well. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's just with elastic, so that stays constant. But so cute. 
I want to make this dress. <laughs> it's so, so pretty. This would be one of those styles that would be perfect for a bamboo fabric, like a bamboo knit, a tri-blend. It would be really great in double brush ponte. Um, super great in something real flowy. So like even a polyester blend, some fabric that has a little, little, little bit of like a drape to it. Y'all, why is my picture... And nobody was going to tell me that my little... Okay, whatever. Why is my picture leaning? Anywho... I really like this dress. Um, I think it's super beautiful and so flattering and just really cute and summery and I couldn't leave it. I wasn't going to leave it. There was no chance that I was leaving Joanne without this pattern. So I'm really happy that I did get my hands on it. The next thing is actually for something. Okay, so I want to talk briefly about why I picked these pants up. And it's because I did see someone with like the cutest shorts like this, but they were... So Ooh my god but they were super super um wide leg with the pleats and everything i don't know where she got them from i was literally just driving in like a shopping center and this woman was walking to her car and i was like oh my god those are so cute went to joanne like a couple days later and i saw these shorts and i was like oh my gosh so i can have them i have been collecting pleated pant and short patterns for a while because i really love the style of a wide leg short um and Although I haven't made nearly enough, I want to make some more. I've been such a baby and not wanting to make any pants because they just do take so much more time than dresses for me. I don't know why, but I'm so particular also about fitting pants and things like that. So it's like, oh, y'all know I would just prefer to make the dress. <laughs> so anyways, I did see this pattern. It did catch my eye. I am still collecting loads of pants patterns, even though I haven't made pants in a while. This one is one that I, I had to add to my collection. So it's McCall's... Oh, what's the number? McCall's 8260. And it is for a skirt. Is it? Oh, yeah. One of them is a skirt. Okay. Which one's a skirt? A? Okay. A must be. I don't freaking know what. So it's for skirt shorts and pants and they have this sort of um triangle shaped yoke on the top um they do have a button closure on the side and it looks like that's the only closure that it has no zipper or anything just a hook and eye and buttons so it's meant to be a really wide leg design it looks like the longest version still isn't like ankle le length it's about mid calf and then A, version A, is for the skirt version, which I'm like, dang, that's super cute, a pleated skirt. Y'all know I love that, too. But I just thought these would be so beautiful, and it looks like Melissa Watson is the designer behind this style, and it's definitely very resort wear, give a resort wear vibe. So um, the fabrics it calls for are wool blends, garberdine, and crepes, and then also you would need a lining fabric for this style. I'd love to see this in a linen. I'd love to see it in that. So we're getting right through it. I did get some more patterns. Now I've had visions about this skirt and when I saw it, not visions before I went, but after I've gotten this pattern, I started thinking about it more and more. And I don't know what's gotten into me, but I've been really loving on some bottoms, like bottom style patterns like bottom style patterns what just patterns for skirts and pants and stuff <laughs> bottom style what what does that even mean anyways um this is mccall's 8259 and it is for different skirts now it has a couple of different versions um really the difference between all the styles is the length so it goes from a rather short wrap skirt to a really long wrap skirt and um it looks like you can either choose to do like a curved style hem or like a straighter hem and um, a ruffle. So I have one skirt that has the optional ruffle and I think it's just version B. You could of course make your own ruffle if you wanted to add a ruffle to something else. But yeah, I, I it's a wrap skirt. 
it's a wrap skirt. Those are so popular, so cute right now. I definitely wanted to have a pattern in my stash to make one of these. I think they're definitely super summery. Of course, wrap skirts are super summery, but I can only imagine how much wear and how easy it would be to throw this on just with like a tank or a cami or something and just look so cute like a summer goddess. I'm here for it. I want all of that. The fabrics it calls for are crepes, lawn, cotton blends, and lightweight sateens. Um, so you definitely, I'd probably say Shally's would work here too, and that would be really beautiful. I always want to throw Shally in there. <laughs> I always want to throw like rayon and linen fabrics in there because they are so amazing in the summertime. Like what? Okay. So I am loving on that version B with the ruffle and I could definitely see myself making that, but I could also see myself making the really long, y'all know I love a long skirt. I'm here for that vibe too. And it's not too, too fabric hungry. So like for the shortest skirt option, it's one and a half yards for my size. The largest size will, is one and three quarters. For a wrap skirt, I'd say that's pretty nice. But of course, once you get down into the really maxi length style, um, it starts getting up to around three yards, but it never quite, never quite gets there. Um, so, you know, I'd say that's pretty good, you know? I like a good skirt. I thought those was super cute. I don't have any wrap skirt patterns, but I have been thinking about how awesome that would be in the summertime. I think it'd be really cute. Um, my only concern with wrap skirts, of course, is the aspect of the wind blowing up and being really exposed. I don't know. Personal thought. Oh my goodness. Personal thought, but definitely something to think about because... I'm thinking, you know, can I add like a small snap or something in? So we'll see how that works out. But I do really want to make a wrap skirt and I've really been thinking about it often <laughs> since I picked up this pattern. So the next pattern is actually for bags. Now I keep, I keep on buying bag patterns and I have yet to make bags. Y'all, I literally have maybe four or five like work in progress totes to my left here of my machine for wallets and purses and I've cut them out the interfacing I've cut out the self fabric I've marked everything and I just have yet to sew them up I don't know what is going on I was obsessed with making bags for a really long time I don't know if you remember that time on this channel but I was obsessed with making bags and I just fell off like what happened there I don't know I don't know I don't know but I want to make some bags now I recently shared this dress and I had um, is this McCall's pattern? I'm not sure. But I shared this dress and it has this super cute little scrunched bag and I was like, I love the way that looks and I want to make some of my own. But like with fabrics I like, something really cute and funky. I was thinking that would be like a super cute little accessory to add, you know, just a little bit of color, picking a fun print. And Anyways, so I was inspired. It was inspired. I don't know if it means that I will actually make a bag soon, but let's just get into it. This is McCall's um, 8272, and it has five different bag options here. So you've got like a standard sort of just handbag. Um, very cute, I'm sure would be perfect to showcase a really nice print. Um, but also you've got version B, which adds, I believe, just some hardware. So instead of it being an open bag, you've got a flap with a snap to close. Um, and then you've got version C, which is the kind of ruched bag I was talking about. So cute. Um, it's got um, a chain. So like they recommend you use like bag hardware, like a chain bag hardware strap. Um, for that design, which I mean, I could take or leave, but I do like the idea. It looks kind of like 90s, 70s, no, 80s, 90s kind of feel with the chain. But then there's also version D, which just has like a scrunched, ruched handle as well, which is kind of more what I was looking for. But I love it. Um, but then you also have version E, which is kind of more of a. Um, I don't know. I, I know it's not hobo. That's not the style I'm talking about, but it makes me think of just 90s. Like all these bags just makes me think of makes me think of 90s style bags, bags I can very much imagine from like my childhood that I've seen my mom wear or like in magazines and stuff like stuff like that. Um, but I love I love the style of E. It's got these kind of like fabric 
um, what do you call that, like cuffs or something, like right at the edge of the bag. I just feel like so like 90s and vintage and cute. Anyways, I got this bag pattern. I thought it was very um, good to add that to my collection because I'm going to get back into making bags. I hope I'm going to get back into making bags. So I got that pattern. I couldn't resist it. But the last two patterns are actually for my daughter. And I know I always include patterns for my daughter. And I literally, I'm going to start making some of these patterns pretty soon. Okay, so the next pattern I want to talk about is um, McCall's 826, 8267. And this is a knit dress pattern for children. Um, this pattern is a knee length style dress. You've got a couple different sleeve options. So you've got short sleeves, sleeveless, or long sleeves for this design. Um, and it looks like it's finished with a neckband and you hem the bottom. So pretty standard knit dress construction here. The main difference is the fact that they've got these cool applique piecing style um, designs on the front. So the first version is a rainbow, like a traditional rainbow. Then there's a kind of like waterfall style rainbow. Um, and then there is a unicorn sort of uh, hair and rainbow situation. Very cute. I loved all these designs. I know my daughter would love to receive one of these. Um, I really like the fact that now Nala is firmly within the size ranges that um, McCall's offers for their children's patterns. I talk about this all the time, but the big four have tons, 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 tons of wearing ease in all their designs regardless of what size. So even though my daughter does now fit um, a 5T, which is definitely offered in this pattern, I will most likely be cutting out a 3T for her, and that would be 5T size in regular clothing and like other pattern companies and things like that. So the sizing is still extreme, <laughs> still extreme, and I've been burned by that before, and I'm not someone who likes to make things that my daughter has to wait to wear. Okay, so the fabrics that this um, pattern calls for is 35% um, stretch knits, so like cotton spandex would probably work. Actually, you probably could get away with like 2% cotton spandex or 3% cotton spandex or bamboo with Oh, I probably wouldn't use bamboo for this pattern because it needs to have a, a fair amount of stability, especially doing all those shapes and stuff for it to not look too warped. So yeah, like a cotton interlock might work out pretty well, depending on what kind of cotton interlock you use. I am looking forward to making one of these because I actually really love this kind of like piecing situation. Like I really like doing that. Um, and I made her a dress that was kind of, that was with paper piecing last year. And I really think I'm going to make her another one this year. I just don't have any real plans. But this could help me out because I do want to I do want to do some more sort of. It's kind of like paper piecing, but not really. Not really at all. Anyways, moving on. The next or the last pattern that I'm going to talk about today is McCall's 8266. This is for another dress, but this is a woven dress. For this woven dress, it calls for cotton blends, poplin, seersucker, and sateen. Of course, cotton, quilting cotton would work really well here too. And y'all know I love to make um, knowledge dresses with quilting, co quilting cotton. It washes so easily. It very, very inexpensive. And plus the prints are super cute. And I like the fact that I can actually take her with me to stores that sell quil quilting cotton and her pick out her own things instead of trying to look online. It makes it a much bigger experience for her. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this pattern. Um, it offers several different super cute versions and I could not leave this one alone. So it does have an optional collar. Um, they have a pointed collar and then a rounded collar with ruffles to die for. You obviously have the option to leave the ruffle off if you want just the rounded collar as well, but super cute with the ruffle. Um, it also does have um, variations for the sleeves. It's got a standard short sleeve. It also has a sleeve that has like a little elastic um, on the bottom, but you still got a cute little ruffle at the bottom, like below that. I never know what to call those but it just adds like a really cute frilly touch to the bottom of the sleeve since the elastic kind of gathers it in um, and then there's also a long sleeve that has um, elastic at the wrist 
There's also a couple different variations with the skirt. So they've got a standard skirt and then they've got a um, ruffle skirt. So cute. Oh my gosh. And in the sample, they made it in a strawberry strawberry print fabric and I am obsessed. I think it's so cute. I think this dress is so cute. I definitely want to make one for Nala. I'd venture to say that if I just left off the sleeves and did some binding to close that arm side that I could also make this sleeveless, which is probably what I will lean towards doing. Um, but I don't know, that kind of ruffly short sleeve situation is cute too. We'll see. But I love this fabric, or I love this pattern because it's just super cute. It's just super cute and girly. Um, it's got a button closure all down the back. Um, I probably would use like snaps so it would make it easier for my daughter to do it herself. But yeah, it is marked as an easy pattern. So this is definitely one that I would recommend if you got some littles in your life. That dress would be so sweet, especially for summertime. But also, like I said, because it has that long sleeve version, you could make some for um, cooler weather as well. But that's it. Those are all the patterns. Let me know which ones you um, liked down below. Please um, let me know if there's any patterns from this launch that you think I missed and I need to go back and get ASAP because what was I doing? Um, yeah, so that's, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.